In my previous video, um, I indicated I was going to do a video going through some of the cool uses for conditional formatting in Excel. And although there's a lot of different things, this particular video is just going to go over two different conditional formatting rules you can set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the previous document we used before. Um, and I have that document actually pinned here. With 2007, you have the opportunity to tell um, Excel to pin any documents you can only use. So they always stay in your recent documents list, which is a nice little way to um, have Excel remember this for you so you can save yourself some time um, getting around and finding documents you frequently work in. So the previous video, um, I showed you that I already have a rule set up with this particular sheet that anytime I type in the word vacant, it's going to automatically change the cell to purple. So I want to show you how that's done. Now one thing to remember, anytime you do conditional formatting, you want to make sure that prior to creating the conditional formatting rule, that you have um, defined the range of cells that you want this to actually apply to. And in this case, what I'm going to do, I wanted to grab all the rows for this entire sheet. So I clicked the 18 um, there, and I'm going to hold down Shift, and then I'm going to page down so I can grab the entire sheet quickly. So now I've grabbed the entire sheet. So now next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Conditional Formatting, and I'm going to create a new rule. And when this comes up, you see a number of different options. And in this case, I'm going to choose Format Only Cells That Contain. Now under here that I'm going to tell it specific text. So that way, anytime the specific word, we're going to use the word house, is typed in, it's going to automatically change the color of that cell to the format we determine. I'm going to leave it at containing, but you can see there are a couple different options here, even with specific text that you can choose. Go ahead, type in the word house. Next, I'm going to click on format. And it already came up to the fill tab. Um, a lot of times it's going to default on number. So you're going to come over to fill. You're going to choose um, a color. And we're going to use this fun um, sea green. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And before I hit this last OK here, just want you to look real quick. Down here you'll see we put in a name, Holiday House. Um, so what's going to happen once I hit OK, you can see it's automatically changed that cell to that green um, color we defined earlier. If I go home, you'll see that I already have um, someone else called Pet House that's allegedly living here, and um, Dora happens to be the name of my dog. When I was making this video, it was coming up with something, so Dora's really my dog. Um, so let's let's just see how this is working. Is it working somewhere else? Who says, um, we're gonna change this one that says, who says is, is in the house? As you can let's went ahead and it changed to that fun green color. So that's the first example of what you can do with conditional formatting. But I want to show you one that um, is incredibly useful when you have an Excel sheet such as this one that has a lot of information in it. And you want to make it a little bit easier on people's eyes because by nature I think most of us are visual. And you can tell here just looking through this, a lot of information in here um, could be a little bit easier for us. So again, I'm going to highlight the entire range I want this to apply to by doing the shift and then page down. Um, a couple little arrows here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another conditional formatting. I'm going to create another rule. So this is in conjunction with the, the vacant and the other one that we already have set up. And in this case, I'm going to tell it, use a formula to determine which cells to format. Um, so the formula um, for this to automatically do this is equals mod um, row, close parentheses, no it's not close parentheses, open parentheses, space, close parentheses, comma, two, close parentheses, equals zero. As you can tell, it's probably not something that's incredibly easy to remember. So the next step I'm going to actually show you setting this up as a macro so that you can remember this all the time or assign it to a specific keystroke so that you don't have to write this down anywhere um, and makes it a little bit easier for you. And I'm going to come again to format and we're going to pick, um, let's pick this fun green color. And then as soon as I hit OK, you're going to see every other row is going to automatically change to that green color. So there you go. Now the fun thing about this, um, let's say we're working on this sheet and then all of a sudden we realize 
oh wow, we need to add in you know some extra rows. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna insert some rows here. And as you can tell, because of that formula, it automatically remembers to apply to every other row. Same thing's gonna happen if we delete a set of rows. As you can tell, it still say, stays there. So that's a lot easier way to have alternate row colors um, versus doing it, um, uh, highlighting you know, a row. Okay, I told this to turn yellow. Apparently it's not gonna turn yellow because I have the uh, conditional formatting set up through the other manner. Um, so let's say we want to create a macro so we don't have to remember that equals mod row. So I'm gonna get out of here without saving this. Come back in, still clipped up here for me. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna save, we're gonna grab this entire range again. Doing it the long way now, not the shift page down. I've grabbed that there. Then I'm gonna come over here to view and then we're going to record a macro. So we're going to say record macro. And we're going to give this a name. We're going to call this test color. I'm going to delete this one out later. We're going to store this macro in our personal macro book. And we're going to tell it control. Um, I don't know if we can do. Let's see if we can do control pound. I don't think that's assigned to anything. So we're going to say control pound is our shortcut keystroke for that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK, and then we're going to go through, oh, shortcut key must be a letter. All right. Let's say Control J. I don't think that's, here we go. Control Shift and J. This is going to be our keystroke, so we'll remember that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK. We're going to come back then. We're going to do that conditional formatting rule that we just did. We're going to do that all over again, so now we're actually recording it so it remembers. Come back again to use formula to determine which cells to format. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to enter in that equals mod row open space close space comma to close parentheses equals zero. And actually what this two is is that's telling you every other row. If we change that to a four, not exactly sure what would happen because I've never actually tried it, but you can actually play around with that too by changing that to Choose that green color again. We're going to go ahead and click OK. Click OK. Go back to macros. We're going to tell it we're actually done recording that macro. So if we actually get out of, uh, let's open up a different sheet actually. We're going to go here to my client passwords template. And we're going to view this in normal mode. Again, highlight the entire area. And then we're going to we come over here to view macros. And you'll see here we already set up test color. So we can select that macro and we can tell that macro to run. As you can see, it's went ahead and it's alternated the rows. Um, the way that we can also do that is, I'm going to go to this particular form. Um, now you know where I live. Highlight the range. We're going to do that control shift and then we assigned it the letter J. So I just did that shortcut combination and there you go. Um, so you can see two different ways to run the macros, either assigning it to a specific keystroke or going under macros and then view macros and choosing it to run. Thank you for joining me today. I will do another upcoming video on more uses for conditional formatting um, because there's a lot of great things you can do with it. Um, and if you aren't following me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is at mmangen. That's M-M-A-N-G-E-N. -E I look forward to connecting with you.